After you've transitioned from Trini into a high plank, then we're ready to move through Chaturanga Dandasana or Chitwari, which means the fourth vinyasa count, the fourth movement in Surya Namaskar A. So from a high plank, first just making sure we have the shoulders in the right position. Let's go to the extremes. So protracting the shoulders by pressing the shoulders away from each other. It feels a, like a rounding in the upper back. The spine lifting up between the shoulder blades. And you're really pushing down through the shoulders. And then retraction of the shoulders. You let the shoulders sink down. Feels like the chest comes between the shoulders. And you let the shoulder blades come towards each other. And so where we want to be for plank is somewhere in between. A place where you feel both. You feel retraction and protraction. The middle path. Good. And if you need to lower the knees, if you're working with me, lower the knees. And so that's where you want the shoulders to be as you bend the elbows. And as we start to bend the elbows from Chaturanga Dandasana, you're here with the heels over the toes and the shoulders over the hands. Shift forward just a little bit. And as you bend the elbows, you're going to move the shoulders away from the ears. So it feels like a squeezing into the shoulder, into the armpits. You're squeezing the armpits to move the shoulders away from the ears and then find that balance between protraction and retraction. As you bend the elbows, open the heart. Don't collapse the heart. Shift the gaze forward a little bit and keep the heart open as you bend the elbows with the shoulders in that position. And so when you get to the bottom, you want to find a place where the hands end up somewhere between the elbows and the shoulders. Some might say that you should come to a 90 degree angle, which technically is fine. I just find that to be a lot on the shoulder joints. And if you do that year after year after year, then it might be too much for the shoulders. But you know, feel that out, see what works for you. I kind of like to come to a place when I get to the bottom where the hands end up at a midpoint between the shoulders and the elbows. Okay, and then now let's talk about the elbows. So as you lower down through Chaturanga Dandasana, you want the elbows to be not out and not in towards the ribs. Again, the middle path. So they're moving in towards the ribs, but they're not touching the ribs. And that's really going to force you to work the shoulder strength to lower down. If you move the elbows in too much, you kind of use that as something to prop yourself up on, and you don't work the shoulder strength as much. So if that's hard for you to move with that integrity in the shoulders, shoulders away from the ears, middle ground between protraction and retraction, bending the elbows so that they're not touching the ribs, but they're moving towards the ribs. If you can't maintain all of those points, then lower the knees. It's better to modify and build strength efficiently from the ground up than it is to do it with the knees lifted. It looks like you're doing the posture, but there's no integrity to the posture. All right, and that's also, how, that's also what leads to injury. So you're here in plank, shift forward a little bit, shift the gaze forward, shoulders away from the ears, middle ground between protraction and retraction. So for me, that meant pushing through the shoulders just a little bit. And then the rest of the body, strong legs, reach the heels back and notice how that helps you to tone the lower belly and tuck the tailbone under a little bit so that the sit bones reach towards the heels. That allows you to really connect into the strength of the core. And again, reach the heels back, tone the lower belly, shift the gaze forward, and then slowly bend the elbows. Keep the heart open. And then you can come all the way down to the floor at the bottom of Chitwari, or you can stay hovering before the next posture. Good. So to wrap it up, I like to start in a high plank, make sure the shoulders are in the right position, engage the entire body. If the whole body is engaged, then you won't put all of the weight into the shoulders. The rest of the body is helping you do the, the heavy lifting. You can imagine like a bridge. If the bridge has the two end points that are strong, but the middle of the bridge is like floppy, then there won't be integrity to the bridge as a whole. So strong body, strong legs, tone the lower belly, and then bend the elbows. If you aren't sure how much you need to shift forward in that plank before you bend the elbows, then reverse engineer it. 
If you're at the bottom, where do you need to shift to so that when you get to the bottom, your hands end up between the shoulders and the elbows? From there, that's where you need to start. Okay, and so then once you figure out these specific positions of the body that work for you, then you, then you can sort of focus on other things. There's like a lot to focus on. So, so at the beginning, we just focus on one thing at a time, and when that becomes ingrained, then we can refine even more. But then, we always need to be going back, stepping back, and looking at the whole thing all over again. But that's what makes this process so fun. <laughs>